Hey, what up? This is Patrick Christopher from the Bible Code Core Podcast Network and the Deuterman Homie Bro Podcast, and this is Props Comic. Uh, as far as I can remember, the earliest, uh, the first comic to ever like that I ever knew of was Rodney Dangerfield. My parents had the record. We would see him on TV, see him in movies, and just just from the records alone, like I just kind of like. I gravitated towards like his whole cadence, his whole delivery, and it, it was uh, amazing. I didn't really know what comedy was, what stand-up comedy was, but the whole like listening to him say something and the crowd laugh as a response, and just like him like controlling that, you know, that narrative type of thing. You know, he, he says this, they react this way, and then just the character that he was like in, in TV and, and in movies and stuff. It was just like it was so fun to watch. It was so fun to like. It was so entertaining, you know, and when I got older, I mean, I understood the jokes a little bit more and I kind of understood like the whole delivery the cadence and all that stuff. And I was always a big fan of, of Rodney Dangerfield. And so I was like, I want to do I want to do something like that. Uh, Patton Oswalt, Patton Oswalt, he's so funny. He's so he's he's hilarious. He's quick. He has the references. He's so smart. And it was that that whole thing. The fact that he was so smart made me think I could never do that. You know, uh, like I followed him when he was he was doing uh, the comedians of comedy tour. You know, with him and and uh, Brian Pusain and Maria Banford, and uh, you know, and he he would do that. And I I probably was seeing Patton Oswalt the most live out of all the comedians I've ever seen. You know, I saw him at least at least three times when I lived in Seattle. And uh, every time it would just it would be mind blowing, just like the things that he would dig up, the references, and he was so smart and so quick. And so I thought, like, oh, you have to be smart to do this. I could never do comedy because I'm not that smart. But it turns out people like dumb dumb comedians as well. So <laughs> Patrice O'Neill has like one of my favorite all time bits. And uh, it's from uh, Elephant in the Room, and it's it's on the, it's on sexual harassment, which you know uh, I I know people didn't like it back then, and for sure they wouldn't like it now. But if I could have that bit, like if I could like if I, you know that because that's the whole thing. Like whose bit would you want you know to take as your own? And that that bit was just so great. It's so funny, man. It's talking about like creating a sexual harassment day, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. You know, you, you come you come to work bringing flowers and you pass out flowers. Like, hey, will you have sex with me? No. Nope. All right. Keep the flowers. That's all. That's you. I just wanted to know, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's that's a great bit that I wish I came up with. But uh, it's Patrice O'Neill's and it's, it's one of the greatest. <laughs> Final show before I die. Would I do it or watch it? I've, of course, I would do it. You know, I'm a narcissist. Uh, so I would I would do my own show. Um, I'd probably be at the Tiger, at the Blind Tiger Comedy Club. What I would want to do, I would I, I, it would be a recording. It would be my special recording or just recording. You know, whatever it's, if it's twenty minutes, uh, thirty minutes, an hour. The thing I would I would want to do th three different shows. I want to do, do three different shows. It would be one with complete strangers. Nobody that knows me is in that room. Another one with nothing but friends and family. You know, uh, people that do know me, and then the third, just to make sure that I have everything that I want, like recorded, like all the footage that I need. I'll go ahead and do a third show with a mixture of strangers and friends and family and stuff. Um, so yeah, if it's my last show, my last ever show before I die, I want to want to record my special. Re re probably record it at the Blind Tiger. Because uh, I love that room. It's a small room, 50, 55, 60 uh, seat uh, Cedar. Um, so I think it would be make, make for a great special. Just so I know when I, when I take my last breath, I know that, well, at least they have, at least I have something on record. When I, when I first started, uh, like getting shows and, and getting booked and all that stuff. Um, and even for some mics, I would do, I would, uh, sing, um, in the car, on the drive to the show, to the gig, whatever, I would sing two songs. I would sing, uh, they're both Counting Crow songs, which is weird because I'm not a big Counting Crow fan. I'm just a, 
I know all the words to these two songs, uh, Mr. Jones and Around Here, uh, Around Here, whatever. Um, and I would just do that as like a, like a brain exercise, just so, because I know all the words, so I'm just like brain to mouth out, brain to mouth out, an exercise, just to make sure that the brain and mouth we're, we're working in, in uh, as a team, you know, because sometimes my mouth works and my brain doesn't. Sometimes my brain works. Eh. But so that was a way to warm up before I go and do a show. You know, I know these words. I'm now I'm saying these words and let's, let's jam. Let's have a good time. Uh, what I what I don't do, I don't get drunk. Um, I've done a few times uh, getting a little too drunk. On stage and that's hard for me because I, I like to drink uh, so if you see me on stage with a beer that's probably like my second beer or that's probably my show beer but I try not to I don't do liquor which is tough because I love whiskey um, but yeah I try not I try to keep all my faculties intact before I go on stage so that just means I don't I don't get a beer I'll get I'll start drinking as soon as I get off though for sure If you're if you're thinking about trying stand up comedy, if you're just thinking about it, you know you're waiting for the right time, you're waiting for the right moment, you're waiting for you know whenever the time is right, just do it, just fucking do it, so you can know whether or not you want to keep doing it, you know, because people find out they wait, they wait, they wait, and then they finally do it, and they're like, I don't even like doing this, you know, which happens. And it's, it's fine. It is what it is. But, like, stop waiting. If you even have the idea, I waited long. I didn't start till I was 35. But I, you know, because I never thought I could do it. I wanted to do it, but I never thought I could. I, you know, I didn't think I had it in me, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, if you're thinking about doing it, you should do it. You shouldn't do it. Uh, because you got to put a lot of time into it. It's, like, if you want to be good, if you want to take this serious, and if you want to, like, if you want to get good, it takes a lot of time. You have to get on stage every day as many times as you can. You have to be out every night. You have to, you have to get on stage as much as you can. That's the only way you're going to get better. So in order to do that, you have to lose time, you know, with your, your significant other. You have to lose time with your family. You have to lose time with your friends. Then you start, you know, becoming distant from the, all these people, the people that you love, the people that were in your circle, that were in your corner, you know. They still love you. They're still, like, you know, in your corner. But, like, it's just not the same because you spend so much time away from them that, you know, you can't, you can't, uh, yeah. So it does take a toll. It, does, it takes a toll on your, your friendships. It takes a toll on your relationships. You know, there's a, like, it's, it's tough. It's tough for the spouses, you know, because you are out there. You are doing something that you love and you're spending something, uh, you're spending a lot of time doing something that selfishly, it's a selfish thing, you know, but also it, it's a great thing. Like, I never, I never understood connections. I never stood connecting with people. Everything was always surfaced. Everything was always surface, all the relationships, all the friendships and stuff. I mean, of course, I have best friends that, like, know me, like, you know, in and out or whatever. But, like, as far as, like, making connections with people, I never I never understood what that was until I started doing the comedy. And now I realize, like, I really like connecting with people. I like, I like this. I like doing stand-up comedy. I like being seen a in this way. So, yeah, you should and you shouldn't. So just 